This episode of the Abiding Together podcast is brought to you by Corda Candles. Corda is honored to sponsor the Abiding Together podcast and to offer a special collaboration candle called the Cloistered Heart, inspired by St. Elizabeth of the Trinity. Each Cloistered Heart candle purchased will help support Sister Miriam's order, the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. Corda's modern saint candles, proudly made by hand in the heartland, have custom scents and clean ingredients with a modern, beautiful design. Explore all their candles at W www.cordacandles.com. Listeners can use the code ABIDE10 through March 31st for 10% off your purchase, not including the Cloistered Heart Candle. May God bless you. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to the Abiding Together podcast. Abiding Together is a place where you can find connection, rest, and encouragement on your journey with Jesus Christ. My name is Sister Miriam James Heidland, and every week I'm joined by two of my very dearest friends, Heather Kim and Michelle Benzinger. This podcast is born out of our friendship and all that the Lord is doing in our lives. You hear us laugh, you hear us cry, you hear us share very vulnerably, and you hear us talk about the things that we're still learning along the way, and you're most welcome to join us. You can find out all of our information on our podcast episodes on abidingtogetherpodcast.com. But for now, grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and welcome home. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Abiding Together podcast and our deep dive into the season of Lent and a wonderful book on St. Elizabeth of the Trinity by Claire Dwyer, which you're going to love, like as we were talking about this right before we recorded, because we've been talking for an hour, as everybody knows we do that. I, we just can't wait to unpack this uh, for you and just yeah, dive in with you and on the simple path of love and the cloister within. But uh, welcome to Lent. Welcome to the very first full week of Lent 2021. Heather, uh, how's that treating you? What do you think? Tell me everything. What? Well, everything. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> you know, I used to love Lent in my younger years. I was a bit more hardcore and how I'm like, eh, Lent, you know, like I got to gear up for it. But actually I was doing the reform wellness stuff like with Jackie Mulligan oh. right before Lent. And so it's been actually a beautiful thing to lead into because there's some practices that I want to continue through Lent. Um, it was just such a nice flow to set up, you know, for Lent. So yeah, I'm excited. You know, I want to open the door for whatever God wants to do this Lent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Throw How wide, about you, Michelle? Throw wide the doors. Yeah, um, yeah throw wide those doors. Mm-hmm. I already feel like I've been in the desert. So. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Lent start like January 1st, 2020? Like what happened? Like, we were like yeah. a year and a half of Lent. <laughs> and it's not like this desert that is like this, oh, this horrible thing, but it's this desert where there has been, like I've switched my schedule a lot for some more solitude as much as you can have mm-hmm. with six children, but solitude and just change in practice is already and I'm off social media a lot. And so just to make space and time for the Lord. So I am excited for Lent and I'm like, also kind of like, uh, how much more growth is going to um, have to happen here? You know, yeah. how much more can I sacrifice? Like, yeah, really? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Cardinal Newman says like growth is the evidence of life. I'm like, baby, then I'm living. I am Mm -hmm. living because there's a lot of growth going on in here. We are living. (laughs) So sister, how about you? I agree. I, I want to. I really wish I was holy enough to say that like Lent was my favorite season, but I've never hashtag things Ever. I've never said. I am so sorry. I, fo- <laughs> football season and Advent and Easter and Christmas are my favorite. Sorry, I just so I'm, work with me, people. I, I'm just the nun being honest. But I, I agree with you. I, I know the Lord does beautiful things during this time, and I I know He has something very special for each one of us. And I think even the way we've been led over the last couple of years to do a Lenten book study. And just the way that the Lord has led us through, I think, searching for maintaining peace and Henry Nouwen, and then now Mm -hmm. this beautiful journey as well. I, I'm excited to see what the Lord is going to do, you know, what he's Mm going to do. So it's because, yeah, it's been quite a year for all, you know, all of us in so many ways. So, so -hmm. yeah, so if you uh, just listeners, just to let you know, you're most welcome to jump along in this stream with us at any time. So the book that we are going to talk about for the next several weeks is called This Present Paradise by Claire Dwyer. You can find that on Sophia Press, I believe, Michelle, I think there's a special code people can use just on the outside. Is that right? Just I'm Yeah, buy 10. If it is out of stock, I I think it's going to be back in stock at the end of February because you all bought all this copies. 
from <laughs> Sophia Press. Thank you. But uh, it's also on Amazon. But all the links are in. <laughs> I know our... people are like, you should have given them a heads up that you guys were going to do this book. I'm like, oh, we did. It's just that everybody went so crazy on it, which is like amazing, so you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, check check Amazon Kindle and eBooks and mm-hmm. all the places that you you can get it. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. And we uh, have posted the where we're going with which chapters each week. So you don't have to have read them before. You can, you know, listen to us and then read them or read them along or what. So just we want to make it as easy for you as possible just to join us on this journey. And I think what you're going to find is we both start as all of us start reading the book. The chapters are very small. And they're very simple. And they really have some great reflection questions at the end of each chapter for you to either dive in personally with a journal or with your small group or however you listen to the Abiding Together podcast. So I I think you're going to find it really just really simply, just simple and beautiful. And we're going to just use her, one of St. Elizabeth's quotes where she says this, uh, she says, may my life be a continual prayer, one long act of love. May nothing be able to distract me from you, she says of the Lord. And that's really what we want to articulate to you as the, as the heart for Lent. This is not something, uh, we're not trying to give you a penitential practice, <laughs> but we really, we're going to keep hearkening back to what St. Elizabeth calls the cloister of the heart, where every single one of us, no matter what our vocation is, where we are in life, that all of us, because the Lord dwells within us, we have a, a sacred place, a quiet place that we can go to at any time. And I think that's so hope filling because all of us, at any time can go into that place and meet the Lord there. So that means nobody listening, nobody on earth is excluded from this beautiful intimacy with the Lord. And I think that's that's such good news. So this is not something we're trying to add to your to-do list for Lent. This is just a simple journey that we want to invite you along with us into all the places, you know, in our hearts, but especially the cloister of our hearts. So maybe just kind of on the outset, as we talk about these first you know, five chapters, uh, Michelle, and I know this kind of, this book came onto your radar uh, early before, before it came onto Heather and I's radar. Can you just tell us a bit like your heart for the book and just your opening kind of thoughts about this whole journey and the book? Yes. Um, well, one, if I would have to name like one type of spirituality, well, you know, I'm a, I choose all. So like I would say like my imagination is probably Ignatian. My worldview is probably Franciscan, but my prayer is Carmelite, like the women in the Carmelite tradition and in the men, St. John of the Cross. It just really forms my prayer. But when I was at Franciscan, one of the cute older friars gave me, he said, I have something for you. And he's like, I want to introduce you to my girlfriend. I was like, um, what? Huh? <laughs> and then he gave me this book, The Writings of St. Elizabeth of the Trinity. Mm. And it was just, yeah, it was just precious. It was Father Sam and it was just, just precious. Mm. And so it was like, you know, we don't choose saints, they choose us. So mm. she's always been one of those distant sisters to me. And then when Claire told me she was writing this book, she asked if I would review it. And so I started reading it and I was like, It was simple yet profound, which I think are the best kind of books. But I think St. Elizabeth of the Trinity and was a contemporary. She was right after St. Therese. Both have such a beautiful way of simplifying the deep part of our spiritual life and simplifying Mm -hmm. the depth of it, that they go deep, but yet they simplify it. And that really both of them, but especially St. Elizabeth of Trinity is like just to make ourselves home, Mm -hmm. like our heart and our souls home in the Trinity. And I love it. She had a deep and profound impact on John Paul II. Um, His writings, like uh, John Paul II's spirituality was um, very Carmelite also in a lot of ways. But I loved, he called her the prophet of the presence. Mm. And I just think that is so Mm. needed at this time in our lives and this time in history. How do we be present to the Trinity in our everyday moments Mm -hmm. and our everyday actions and our everyday, and how do we really bridge the Mary and the Martha in each of us? And so Mm -hmm. how do we live that out? And I think she's a perfect example to teach. And her personality Mm -hmm. is fun. I mean, it's just different. And I love how the Lord chooses different saints. Each is so unique. And so just, yeah, there's not one saint that is like the other. I mean, there's similarities, but we're all such a unique masterpiece in creation. I think that's so fun to dive into. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, my hope for this Lenten journey is that some of these ideas that we know in our mind can move more deeply into our heart. Like I remember a, a time where I, we've heard the scripture, you know, Jesus lives in us or, you know, whatever, like the power of Christ or the power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me, all of those things. And it had been in my mind for a long time, but there was one day I was feeling incredibly alone. And I remember laying in my bed and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like 
Jesus is within me right now, mysteriously. Mm -hmm. You know, he is alive in me. And that means that I'm never alone. And I remember laying there and a huge smile just crept across my face. And I was like, I'm not alone right now. I'm never alone right now. Jesus is living within me. And I think this idea of like the cloister within the heart, like the place that no matter where we are in our state of life, whether we're a mom or a student, single, married, religious, like no matter what we're doing, poor or rich, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. that there's this place within the secret place where we can uh, unite with Jesus, where we can meet him there. And for that idea to move from our head to our heart and actually become a lived experience for us this Lent, I think would be the greatest mm -hmm. gift of all for each mm -hmm. of us. So. Mm -hmm. I totally relate to what you both have said. And that's so true of, and I was, I was reading some of her words. I was thinking of what things matter most, you know, what things mm. matter most and, and how do we as women, especially in our gift of receptivity and our gift of outpouring. So life is born in all the ways that the Lord does that. How do we continue to give of what is most true and most beautiful? And I, there really is no other way then being continually grafted and integrated and brought into intimacy with God. I mean, that's the, every single person on earth has a place where nobody else dwells but the Lord and their soul. And it's sacred and it's, it's sovereign for the Lord. And, and that we must go to that place and we must learn how to live out of that place because it's then when we talk about this all the time on the podcast, then that our loves are ordered. Mm -hmm. Otherwise mm -hmm. it's us distracted or us grasping or us pushing away like all the things we do but like that deep place. And I, I want to, I loved the introduction. I mean, there's just so many great things here, but I love the introduction uh, on page two where, and Claire writes so beautifully. Can I just say that? Like, I love her mm -hmm. just even like articulating when she was a little girl living in Wisconsin, just like the beautiful countryside. She just writes so well, but she said this and she, she herself, you know, as a mom and she's trying to figure out union and, you know, you know, and of Eliz St. Elizabeth saying her vocation was not really Carmel, but union. And she says this, this is Claire's introduction. She says, I remember exactly where I was standing in the backyard holding a book of her writings when I realized that I had found a saint who perfectly bridged the divide between the caramel and the kitchen and the chasm separating the cloister and the carpool. <laughs> and I just, mm. that is so great. And I think so, I mean, our listeners, whatever that is for you, we can all relate to that. We can all relate mm. to that. And so the simple truth of the Carmelite spirituality is that it's not beyond the reach of anyone that God is mm -hmm. within and we need, we need only turn to him and have him reveal himself there. So, so shall we dive in ladies? Let's just want to yeah, dive let's into, let's just talk about some things that stuck out to us. Um, Michelle, do you want to lead us off? What are some things in the first five chapters, or if you want to go chapter by chapter, we can kind of just see just some things that you'd love for our listeners to notice as they, as they make their way. Yeah, I think you start at the beginning of her life when it talks about who she was and, you know, this family of four, but that she lost her father at the very beginning. And if you read different biographies about her, I would like read this book and I have her writings and then I went ahead and read a couple more biographies about her life. Like he ba she basically like her father almost died in her arms. Like she was there through mm. that whole point. Mm. And then it just became her mom and her her and her sisters. And just that whole idea of communion and hope at the very first chapter, like the communion, we belong in a family. And I think it's so beautiful that she was so close to her father and her grandfather. And it talks about this, but that really the Trinity is family. It is mm -hmm. communion. Yep. It's communion with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and their love. But I love that she extends an invitation to us all that we're part of that family. And that we are called to be in union with this family also. And that that family dwell I mean, that family dwells within us. You know, it is always there. And like Heather, you were saying earlier, we are never alone. We are always in the midst of Trinity and in the midst of family. But even in that great loss that she had hope, that she had a gaze of hope. And I loved that Claire weaved in some of John Paul II's beautiful poetry. Mm -hmm. You know, we will post the link here to the book of poetry because as soon as I read the book, I ordered that book of poetry because I'm a huge poetry fan, but from John Paul II. But just that beautiful language of hope and that we, our hope is we have to put on our eyes in eternity. And it actually got me thinking because I was like, Lord, there is something about different saints where they lose their mothers early. Mm -hmm. Like I was thinking of St. Therese and then Saint, and then like St. Elizabeth Trinity lost her father. And then St. Teresa of Avila lost her mother. Mm -hmm. John Paul II lost his mother early. I'm like, Lord, what is that? You know, that they suffer. But I think the Lord uses all of that suffering to bring them in deeper communion with him. And that is what he's calling us to do, to have hope within the separation. But to also realize the desire of our heart 
is communion in each and every one of our hearts is that is family is that ache for home Mm -hmm. and the true home is the trinity Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i was i thought it was really beautiful too the articulation of her life and and loss and because can't we all relate to that and i could Mm -hmm. also feel like even as claire was writing about uh, saint elizabeth's mama like you could see why her mom would not want her daughter to go to the cloister. I mean, you could just yeah. totally, you could, you could, you just feel in her mom's heart, like circle the wagons, <laughs> circle the wagons, you know, like let's, and you could just feel even her own heart of this woman who had just lost her father and her husband. And it said that she even lost her, f- her first fiance. And then, you know, now she's got these two young daughters and I just imagine how, how hard that would be to raise two young girls during that time, especially, I mean, it's always hard, but especially, so you could just feel like her heart there and all of us can relate to losses in our life and you know it's and the places where we often grieve so deeply and then maybe that grief has never been trans like walked through or allowed to really come to the surface and I just I love right out on the onset that you know here she is as, as a young girl who was very choleric and very fiery and has suffered a lot even as a as a young girl and that doesn't preclude her from still seeking God mm. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. Yeah. There's just like one, one little line that says surrender is so painful. Mm. It's like, it truly is like, it truly is because we have a choice to make when we experience loss and difficulty and things in our life that just don't go as they should. And we're in pain. It's like, what are we going to do with that? You know, are we going to surrender it to the Lord? And trust that out of his goodness, he can make all things new and he can take horrible things and turn them into something beautiful. Or are we going to bury it, get into all our own coping mechanisms? Like what, what are we going to do? And we do have a choice. And I think sometimes we just let life happen to us. And then we wonder years from now, like, how did I get here? You know, but I think there's hope even in that is like when surrender is so painful, but when we surrender to a God who is good and trustworthy and kind and powerful, you know, Mm -hmm. like he is not meek and mild in this way. Like he is powerful and he can make all things new. We open up to the goodness of God in places that, yeah, it doesn't make sense to the world. You know, only God can take horrible things and make them beautiful. That's what he's all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we see continually in the life of of St. Elizabeth is that reality of mm-hmm. surrender. And I thought, mm-hmm. what did, what is stew, the Lord, the Holy Spirit was really given her astute insight, even as a little girl into her own temperament. And, you know, her about to make her first Holy Communion and promising her mama that she would be better. <laughs> that, like I promise. And, mm-hmm. and this, this fiery girl learning. And then, and it said, you know, her being reduced to tears when she lost that battle sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it, gosh, don't we, don't we all know those places in our own heart of these areas of deep poverty where we mm-hmm. see, Oh gosh, we all have them. And it isn't it so I know it brings me to tears at times in my own life of like, oh Lord, here's this place again. You know, here's this place again. And and she also talks about I thought Claire t- spoke very beautifully about just the, the humiliation of Saint Elizabeth's mother when <laughs> Claire's mm-hmm. like acting crazy. And it just she had this great um she had this great quote in there, uh, Claire says, when she talked about how Elizabeth had this massive outburst, you know, when, when this nun took her doll and made it baby Jesus and Claire realizes that the doll is now dressed up on the altar and she screams out in the middle of mass, you wicked priest, give me back my doll. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so it's so great because Claire writes, oh, the humiliation. She's like, we can almost see the color rise in her mother's cheeks as she carried Elizabeth out, followed by the stairs of the congregation. Nothing can mortify our pride like parenting. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so Amen. Can you can the two of you just talk about that for a second, please? I would just I think it would bless our listeners so deeply. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. And then like I love how her mother says in the book, uh, Claire writes, a real devil, her mother called her, prone to frequent tantrums and stubborn out outburst her parish priest observed that she would either be a saint or a demon and i know for certain that there are two children that i say like this child is going to make me a saint you know and he's amazing and i love him but he just i want my kids to conform to my will my will not your will and i mean it is just they yeah it is just so funny like i mean i know there's been so many times where I really have to just check my ego and everything else at the door because my kids will do stuff. I'd be like, what are you? I mean, I literally like look at them in amazement. Like, what are you thinking? I mean, a perfect example is I had all these boys and we lived on, you know, 120 acres on this huge camp. So when we were potty training, we taught them to pee outside, you know, not thinking like that. Oh, we need to say, okay, when other people are around, you know. 
So I will not forget, like, they're having an outdoor mass somewhere at the place where we're at this camp. And all of a sudden we turn around and you see two little white butts peeing on the other side of the field and all these teenagers laughing. And I'm awesome. like, just let me melt into the ground, melt to the ground. But they're like, Mom, you said we could pee outside. I mean, in their minds, you know, they're like four and five years old. But it was just so funny. So funny. All I can imagine. That, awesome. that Heather, awesome. what about you? What's been your experience at times? Oh my gosh, like just how candid kids are. And you, I mean, self control yes, is something that honest. grows over time. And kids don't have that. Like, they mean they are just brutally honest at every moment and they go against the what's appropriate, you know, for situations like Michelle's story, case in point. But yeah, I remember my youngest, Eva, we were somewhere and it just smelled weird where we were. And she was standing there with her little finger like stuck under her nose. And she just says loud for everyone to hear, you know, like it smells like the reeks in here. And I'm just like mortified, <laughs> like you're looking around at everybody I was like oh my gosh but there's so many moments like that where you're like just humbled beyond or your kid is screaming their face off they have a blowout in their diaper and there's just poop everywhere like yeah nothing humbles you like parenthood that's for sure <laughs> nothing mm -mm. <laughs> but I've often said you know like about things like that and experiences like that and parenthood is a good a, a kind of an easy way to see it but we all have these places mm. where you can be stretched so far beyond your own capacity. And there's a purpose for that because God is stretching your heart to love deeper, mm -hmm. you know, to love deeper and more selflessly. Like those crucibles are really the place where you can become who you were meant to be. If you surrender to it, like mm -hmm. that's what it goes back to surrender is painful. Yes, it is. But when we do and we stop fighting with the circumstances that happen, and trust that God can bring about good things, those truly can be the places where our hearts expand to love in ways that we never would have been able to do on our own. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I think there's such insight, like you said earlier, sister, there's something childlike about her and that she came into her face so boldly when she was young. Mm -hmm. And Cardinal Newman, can y'all tell I'm writing another book about Cardinal Newman? He said, there's a special grace for those that it go fall so deeply in love of their faith when they are young. Like mm -hmm. when the Lord grants, it's a grace, it you is. know, to be able to, because a lot of us know second graders, so, like this is a grace that she is that self-aware mm -hmm. that the Lord entered her heart so boldly and that she received that invitation so mm -hmm. boldly also that, that she was able to do this. And she has a line after her first communion saying like, um, I am no longer hungry. He fed me, mm -hmm. you know, so that beautiful union she had was an extension of the invitation. But I love that she really struggled with her temper. And that was mm -hmm. the struggle for a while, not just, I mean, mm -hmm. for a long while. And that she had this intensity, like there was an intensity personality about her, which I think like for any of us that are raising intense kids or live with intense kids or have intense people mm -hmm. in our family, I am an intense person. So <laughs> yeah, or we are the intense one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, like, okay, how does the Lord need to channel that intensity? And for me, like, mm -hmm. I know for my intensity, it is a blessing and is a curse. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know um, my counselor said to me, you know, she's like, you can exhaust the people around you so easily because you go at a speed that is not normal. And so she's mm -hmm. like, not only do you exhaust yourself, but you can exhaust the people around you with just your idea of pace, expectations, stuff like that. And it was just like this aha moment where like, okay, I know what she's saying is true, but wow, you're right. Oh, okay. I do do this, mm -hmm. you know? And so our intensity, like our biggest blessings are also sometimes our hardest crosses to carry because they haven't been refined mm -hmm. or like you said, Heather, surrendered, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's such a beautiful thing to realize in each and every one of us. Like where has the Lord brought this different intensities or where are the things in our life that are both blessings and curses, mm -hmm. you know, that are mm -hmm. all wrapped up in one. And the Lord is just continually refining. It's not a one-time refinement process. It is a continual re refinement process mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. well, that's so true. I mean, it reminds me so much of St. Paul, this fiery yeah. preacher who at the same time says, I have this thorn in the side. And that, that Jesus says, you know, my power is made perfect in weakness. And it reminds me of the episode we did on St. Joseph, the, the letter of St. Joseph, where mm -hmm. Pope Francis just beautifully, he just beautifully articulated that of how our our frailty is the very place where the Lord works and we want to do away with it. But he said it's often in these very places where salvation history is made known. And it's just really um, just stunningly beautiful. And I, I love where she says, um, I mean, she's preparing for her first Holy Communion. And and it's true, like what you both are saying, like this is a lifelong journey. 
And Mm -hmm. we, I think often so time we get so frustrated with ourselves and other people at times that we're not there yet. And we're, it's like the continual journey of like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we see, mm-hmm. and we see movements and aim into it, but isn't this, and it's so humbling. It's just so humbling. But I, I love when she's talking about receiving her first communion and she says, um, the first encounter that great day when we gave ourselves to each other completely, right. For, for her to receive mm-hmm. the Lord and, you know, to give, I, that was so, I, I wept over that. I just sat and cried over it. It's just so, cause that's the truth of what is like, that's, that's union. That's what we all long for. That's home. That's heaven. You know, where she says, Jesus is my heaven. And that's true. He's our home. And that continual, always going back to the inner cloister, when she writes one of her friends later, one of the other chapters, she talks about writing her friend and she's like, you know, you can go there anytime you want. Mm-hmm. When things upset you or you're irritated, mm-hmm. you you just go right there and you tell Jesus all about it. I was like, oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, it's incredibly beautiful. Mm-hmm. I think those places, like just back to those places where we feel the blessing and the curse, you know, I have found in my own life that because like that could be like if we allow it to be transformed by God and the Holy Spirit breathes like into Mm -hmm. those places, that's the place where the enemy feels most threatened, Mm -hmm. you know, like that's our places Mm -hmm. of glory, like potential Mm -hmm. glory. And so he will hit us hard in those places and and attack us. And that's where the twist comes in. Like we talked about in a previous episode with Father Josh, like our desire starts from a good place. Mm -hmm. When the enemy attacks our desire, we experience woundedness. It twists into something else, sin, and, you know, we distance from God and all of that stuff. And I think it's the same with like these places of our heart where like, if if I don't avail myself to the Holy Spirit, this is going to become really bad in my life and it could cause a lot of destruction Mm to me and to other people. But when I surrender that to to the Lord, then he can use that to actually be the place where I'm, I am most building his kingdom and bringing his kingdom here on earth because I've surrendered it to him. And this is where my greatest gifts lie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of like the diamond that, Mm -hmm. that becomes like polished and whatever. I think those are the places that threaten the enemy. And so when we surrender or we feel that tension within us of like, oh, this place in my heart, like I'm really being hit hard here, like to press in deeper, to ask the Holy Spirit to come and shape and form those places even more, because that's what's going to draw us into intimacy. That's what Mm -hmm. we see with Elizabeth, right? Like her intensity is what drew her in. When I read those words too, sister, like when she's having her first communion, I was like, what little kid says that? Like what little kid experiences that? Mm -hmm. It was her intensity (laughs) that, that allowed her to experience exactly. that even then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, this, so I remember one time somebody said, it, there's a great saying that, you know, people often say that our gift and our wound often lie side by side, you know? Absolutely. And so you see you know, like what you're both are saying, you, you see that and you see that in her, which I think is such a great example for all of us is the continual diet, like the continual not being afraid to dive into those places. And that the last chapter on chapter five, she talks about her, her, her diving into music and how beautiful, you know, that is and, and her love of beauty. And it's just so, I just, it's just so stunningly revelatory of God's, God's grace and his goodness. And, and she says, you know, I, it really wasn't me playing. It was Jesus playing for me. Like he played for me. And it's just so stunning of even her, the, the gift that Lord had given her and that, which she, she will all, she'll surrender all of that. She'll surrender the music. She'll surrender her desire to enter Carmel. She'll just, just just continually surrender that. And and just to watch later how Jesus gives it all back to her in ways she can't even possibly imagine. And I love how the Lord uses everything in her life. He uses mm-hmm. the intensity mm-hmm. and of the Lord. I love it how what Claire says in the book that he has the map to your holiness already mapped out for you. So you know, and it's an individual mm-hmm. unique map, but each of us have that. And it is just a response. We, he extends the invitation and we have to respond. But I've been really been thinking about this. Elizabeth of Trinity is she was one of the first ones to really talk about the universal call to the holiness before the church really mm-hmm. verbalized that and made that clear. This universal call to holiness that is not only just priests or religious sisters, but it is laity. It is all even her relationship with her sweet sister. That's who she wrote a retreat mm-hmm. for a mom at home with all these children. And I love, and Mm -hmm. she talks about this a lot in the book, that bridge in between religious sister and a wife and mom or whatever, Mm -hmm. all women, that bridge between the vocations are all people, but that each of us have a call to holiness, that it is written in our hearts, you know, Mm -hmm. and it is already there and the Lord has a map and it uses our weakness, it uses our wounds, but it uses our gifts too, you know, like this beautiful gift of music, but that, you know, she used it as a prayer, like she said, but she had to surrender that 
gift back and the Lord transformed it. And it would be very Mm -hmm. easy to say like, I can't Mm -hmm. join Carmel because I have this beautiful gift of music that the Lord uses it, Mm -hmm. but the Lord will use it. It may not look like what we think it does, like what we think it should look like, but it does. And also I think sometimes that he calls us to surrender these gifts or these desires for a season for him to refine yeah. them so that we use them for his glory. Yes. I know before, like mm-hmm. I had a real reconversion, you know, like I went to design school and art school and all of that and thought that that's the route that I was going to go. And then I had a, you know, a radical reconversion and that all shut down. And I thought I will never use that ever again, you know, and then I went mm-hmm. the theology route and all this kind of mm-hmm. stuff. But yet there was something ingrained in my heart for aesthetics and beauty and art. But I, my pendulum swung so far the other way. I'm like, well, that's just worldly. And I'm not going to, the Lord hadn't redeemed it yet, mm-hmm. you know, and he didn't bring it back until after I had children. And I started designing again for my kids, my boys, because there was no cute, cute kids boy shirts. And so I, mm-hmm. that's why I started, you know, but the Lord redeemed that gift and brought it back mm-hmm. in another season and it needed to be restored. And the gift was not bad. I just did not use it to his glory. So he knew in his wisdom that he needed just to remove it for a season and to have the maturity mm-hmm. to steward it well in another season. And that is what I think is such a beautiful thing about her and the, just the gifting and part in this book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think she she does a great job in this book of of drawing out like God can use all things, like, all like things. exactly what you're saying, Michelle. And I love this part in here where she says, the Lord has laid out for us the exact means to holiness. We may look for signs in the stars, a parting mm-hmm. of the clouds with streams of light, illuminating a brilliant way to paradise, but more likely our path is made of breadcrumbs and fingerprints pointing the way to heaven in smudges of peanut butter. It's the little <laughs> things. It really is. And I was like, it is the little things. Like this is St. Therese. This is the spirituality of so many saints. It's the little way of love. And every time that we think that sainthood isn't possible for us, you know, like I read these words and I'm like, oh, it just gives me hope. Like it it really is the little things. Like, and I can do the little things. Like if I put my, not just my mind to it, but if I set my sights on like, Jesus, I want to love you in all of these little things. I'm not just going to do things for the sake of doing them, but I want to love you in all of these small ways that I can right in my world today, no matter who I am or where I am. I'm going to pick this up because I don't want to. I'm going to serve this person even when I don't feel like it. I'm going to just sacrifice for you, Jesus, so that you can you can bring me, you know, closer to your heart. Mm. It's possible. Mm-hmm. You know, it is possible with the, with the gift of the Holy Spirit with mm-hmm. us. Oh, it's just so stunningly lovely and just so simple. And mm-hmm. we really you know, as we kind of come to the end of our first discussion here, but kind of synthesizing what you both are saying that the Lord, you know, he purifies our gifts so they don't become idols, right? So mm-hmm. that the people don't become idols or situations don't become idols. And so often, as you were saying, Heather, that we just fight against that. We fight against the very things the Lord's like, I'm trying to help you, like, help me help you, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And we're like, no, Lord, it has to be something different. Or we think, you know, if only I had a different story, I'd be holy. And if only this hadn't happened to me, I'd be holy now. And I, I th- I'm sure I've said this a million times before, but I'm very much convinced that on the day, you know, we leave this earth and we leave chronological time and we enter into Kairos, into the present fullest moment with the Lord and we look at him and I think all of us are going to look at him and say, oh, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, it had to happen just that way. It couldn't have happened any other way. It had to happen like that. And I just, I think, well, it was just smile like, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but anyway, I'm excited, y'all. This is beautiful. This is beautiful and fun. Mm-hmm. And I just can't wait to hear from our listeners how it blesses them. And I know we've talked about a lot today. And so we just want to encourage you just to really sit with the Lord and just to ask, you know, what's stirring in your heart? What are some places that the Lord wants to speak to you, maybe in the area of, of surrender or gift and a gift and wound or intensity or where that is for you, or even what it like, what it looks like to have a cloister in your heart? What does that look like? What is Jesus? What beautiful room is he preparing in your heart where he's already waiting to meet you? Because he's already there. So I think this is a great transformation, a bit of a metamorphosis, right? Uh, Pouring out of this Lenten season. So ladies, any last things before we jump into our one things for the week? No, for our listeners, we wanted to make this 
just really practical and hands-on, but simple where it's not like a lot of times during Lent you're like, oh, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things is to be present to the Lord in the present moment, Mm -hmm. you know, to really enter into that inner cloister. I think for us, one of the beautiful ways and tools that the church has given us is an examine is where you look upon your day and say, okay, like it's just a review for you to ponder and pray through your day. Where did I feel the Lord close? Where did I feel the Lord not so close? Where did I fail to love? But it shows you almost the movements of your heart. And I think that's what it is. And I think more and more as I grow in the spiritual life, it, the majority of spiritual life is paying attention mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. to the Lord's presence and the movements of your heart and others. And so we will post the link in our show notes about there's a beautiful exam and Carmelite exam that the Carmelite sisters out in LA have on their website. But it is beautiful. And you can actually, they let you uh, print it out as a PDF that you can use just to be a tool for you, you know, to really examine your day and see the posture of your heart and just to be present to the paradise that is literally around you, you know, with the people that you love or in your own heart. So we will give that to you. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, ladies, so we talk about our one things for the week. Miss Heather, would you like to share your one thing with our listeners? Yeah. My one thing is just a little gift for those of you that might be blessed by this. I have a Lenten playlist on Spotify. The link is going to be in our show notes. So you can go on our website, abidingtogetherpodcast.com and just click on this episode and you'll find all the, all of our one things. This is for every episode we do, but there's going to be a link for a Lenten playlist in there. So if you just need some music to accompany your time in the desert, I just chose these songs. They spoke to me of those themes and I hope it blesses you. So, I hope one of the Michelle. songs is I went through the desert on a horse with no name. Is that part one of them? No? <laughs> Dang, no. I forgot about that oh, one. I'll add it there no. right away. <laughs> Sister, why don't you sing it for us right now, please? 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 <laughs> yeah. Come on, girl. Yeah. I love it. Give her a beat, Sorry. Heather. Give her a I beat. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Anyway. That's awesome. Yeah. We need Father, ja- Father Josh back he on. He would here for totally some do it. Oh, my God. totally would sing it for you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what about you, Michelle? Mine is a book. I don't think I've named it on before. I've had this book for a little while, hmm. but this is like the third time I've gone through it. But it is, a, it's almost like a coffee table book, but it's a practical book too called Restoration House. And it's creating a space hmm. that gives life hmm. and connection to all who enter. And it is an amazing that. author. I love Ooh. her. It is Kenesha Bucks. And she really says, how can you make inviting spaces in your home and how the whole process of restoring her house restored her soul and her heart in the Lord. It is a great Mm. book. And just as I'm taking this time and like really living into my word of the year, you know, Lori and creating a space and sanctuary, I've been going through this book and I just know like there's something about when you get your hands busy It also does something to restore your heart as I'm just restoring Mm -hmm. and making space in my own home, just that practical part. It is a prayer. Like we said, it it makes me very aware of the present moment and makes me very aware of the Lord in the space in my house. And so where I'm trying to creating space Mm -hmm. in my house and even homemaking is I want it to be an art and not just a chore. Like, let's be honest, there'll be times where it's a chore. Like, I mean, the laundry, it is plentiful and full in my house, (laughs) but you know, I'm really trying to, what does it look to make a home an art form in its way, shape, or form? So mm. I'll let you know. And sister, what is mm-hmm. your one thing? That is stunning. Uh, my one thing is a shout out to our dear friend, Monica, who she and her husband run Damascus, the Catholic youth camp out in outside of Columbus, mm. Ohio. And I got to go just to visit. We, uh, Bo- <gasps> Dr. Bob and I uh, put on a hey. priest retreat there, a day of reflection for a priest. And it was hosted, Damascus hosted it. And Monica and her staff prepared the room for us. And I, I can't, I would love to go in the summertime. It's such a glorious Catholic youth camp. If you're in the Ohio area, I would highly recommend joining one of their summer programs. I think they have winter programs too, but I just want to say how beautiful. I'm just going to embarrass Monica, but we know how how lovely Monica is. It's mm, just just so amazing. lovely. You talk lovely. about the feminine genius at its finest, and just her attentiveness to detail. And she's a mama with many kids, and she's a mom of many staff members of the missionaries and all the people that come there. And she was so lovely and just so gracious and just so caring. So I just could not go another day without giving a public shout out to her just for her beauty and also um, what her family does there and all the people that come to Damascus and receive. So I, it just, it was so edifying. I was just so blessed. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. She's a great one that Monica. She's wonderful. Yeah. So, well, dear friends, we're happy to have you on the journey. Uh, as we mentioned, you can find the book on This Present Paradise on uh, Sophia, uh, their website. You can find it on Amazon, but just come along with us or just listen if you want. We would love to have you on the journey and 
And so here we go, diving into Lent uh, in a very little way, each of us in the cloister of our own hearts with the Lord. So until next week, we will be abiding together. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you liked it, would you please share it with a friend? We encourage you to head over to our website, abidingtogetherpodcast.com, where you can find all the show notes, links to our one thing, transcripts, group discussion questions for each episode, and beautiful mugs, t-shirts, journals, and prints in our shop. There you can also subscribe to receive our weekly email with links to each new episode and all of its content. We'd love to connect on social media and invite you to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter so you can catch inspiring reflections every day. You're also welcome to join our private Facebook group and dive deeper into discussions with our fellow listeners. If the podcast has blessed you, would you prayerfully consider financially supporting us? The Abiding Together podcast is only available due to the generous support of our listeners. There are significant costs associated with creating this content, such as tech support, design, website, equipment, and hired staff that we need to be able to continue offering great content to you. Abiding Together is a nonprofit 501c3, and all donations are tax deductible. You can make donations of any amount through a website called Patreon, or you can send us a check directly if that's easier. If you donate $15 or more per month on our Patreon page, you become a tribe member and you will receive monthly individual videos from Michelle, Heather, and I, as well as other exclusive content, recipes, playlists, downloadable prints, and more. You can find all the information about Patreon at patreon.com forward slash abiding together. Thank you and God bless you.